with our kids. We don't know any none of our friends are around. Nobody is in around in our area. We want to stay in our own area. So hence, we need the long-term care products and ideas and strategies available to us. And at that point, we can, like I said, our products will allow people to have home care. So we can set it up for nursing and stay in our home as long as possible. And, and, and that's really what the world has become. And it's, no, it's not going to go back with the Internet and technology. People are living further and further away. Families are fragmented, broken apart. You see that in divorce. You know, families now have divorce situations. Mom and dad might be divorced. It's impossible for people in their 30s, 40s. They're trying to take care of their own children, get their own children to college. It, it just, it just, it's, it's, society has changed significantly, and we have to make sure that we take care of ourselves. And one area that is inevitable is retirement planning needs to include proper long-term care planning. He used to always be like, well, I want to make sure that I have something for my kids. I want to be able to leave my kids something. And now a lot of times, you know, the kids have more money than the parents did. You know, that's just the way things have gone because salaries have changed and things like that. And now kids are saying, you know what? I don't want your money. Use it for yourself. And you know what? If you can take that money and, well, you know, even though you're planned for the long term, go have fun with it. Go do something before it's too late. Right? Right. Yeah. And that, that, that's true. With... um not you know you're not always the case, but you, you you're right. Children and people in their twenties, thirties, forties, a lot of times have made more money than mom and dad ever made in their lives. So typically, our our couple, I say, a married couple come in, or an individual, they come in and they say, "Well, I want to make sure I'm taken care of, and that I don't have to be a burden on my children. If there is excess, then we would love to be able to leave something to our children right. or grandchildren." However, and that's the emphasis I try to put on people. Of course, I have three children of my own. I want to be able to leave my kids something. It's always nice if you can help them out when you pass away. But one, you have to be able to make sure you take care of yourself. And the cost of long-term care and nursing home and home care or assisted living is astronomical. It's increased tremendously. In the Ann Arbor area, we are $90,000, $100,000 a year plus for long-term care. I have a client whose husband had a, uh, a violent form of Alzheimer's, and there were three facilities in the state of Michigan where she could put him. It was $120,000 a year. We needed to have her money and some proper planning that we did to allow her to pay for that and take care of herself and her husband. So if there is money left over in that situation, We'd love to be able to leave it to the children, but we want to make sure mom and dad are properly taken care of. You're listening to Planning for the Future with our guest, long-term care expert, Joe Ogris. For a free copy of Joe's book, call 734-418-2111. There's one of the things that I like to call uh, the chivalry aspect. So a lot of times you'll get a husband that comes in and says, I want my wife taken care of. So put all this insurance on her, do this for her. I want it all on her. Don't worry about me. But in essence, it's not really helping her. It's helping him. Um, right. So if he wants to help her out, they both really need to be covered, right? That's correct. Because if you look on averages, women outlive men to be good with. So there's a, you know, I don't know, percentages wise, but probably 70, 80% chance that the husband will pass away before the mom, or the husband will get sick before the mom and need care. We have to make sure that the husband is taken care of. Another area, and it's not always across the board, but a lot of times, physically wise, it's easier for the husband to care for the mom in those type of situations, in a home care situation. Right. When it comes down to it, a lot of times, physical wise, the wife cannot physically take care of the husband. We need to make sure that we put equal care effort into the long-term care planning for the husband as well as the wife so mom can get help. Maybe she can keep her husband at home, but maybe she can have a nurse come in four times a week and help with showers or bathing or some of the things that she just can't do. Dad is 210 pounds, mom's 130 pounds. Right. We, you know, she physically can't get dad out of bed. She can't help him shower. She can't do that. She needs help. So it's just as important for both mom and dad to have long-term care planning prepared for their future. What are three things that you would recommend to somebody coming in to start their long-term care planning? 
Well, one thing we do with people, we have them fill out a, a, a confidential client questionnaire, fill out all their information, different investments, everything that they have in their life, a family history, a health history. And then from there, we sit down with people and we put together their plan. Now, we're looking at a couple things. One, we have to look at the idea of what assets and investments do we have that we can potentially put towards long-term care, number one. Number two, we have to really teach people and educate people on the importance of long-term care. Like I said, they might be in their 50s, 60s, early 70s, and they're meeting with us, and they still feel pretty healthy. So they're not aware of what's coming up down the road. So it's very important that we educate people. And what I always do with people, I'm like, I look at your situation right now, but let's look at the generation above us. Let's look at mom, dad, aunts, uncles. What is their situation? And inevitably, they're like, oh, yeah, Uncle Jim is in a nursing home. Mom needs home care. Okay, well, you are going to reach that point in your life also. We have to get you prepared for that. So we educate people, number two, to teach them to be aware of it. And number three, they they have to realize that we have to put individual strategies together for people and plan for their future and make sure that they are properly taken care of. People sometimes wonder, is is it ever too late to start planning? It isn't. Certain things are available and not available. Now, I would say it's too late for long-term care planning for the traditional way that 95% of the advisors are going to show people, which is traditional long-term care standalone insurance. They will be priced out of the game. If they're 72 and you go for standalone insurance, you're never going to be able to afford it. You'll see numbers of $10,000. You know, we'll see numbers $10,000, $20,000 plus a year in order to get long-term care coverage. So, it's too late for the general advisor or what the typical people think. However, us being long-term care strategists and planners and specialists, we know of different techniques. We know of different funding. We, we've been able to help people out that are already in a nursing home and make some money available to them or some different strategies available to them that they never had known existed. And the key to that is it's so important. If mom and dad had, just as an example, five hundred, six hundred thousand dollars $600,000 in investable assets, they may not realize that we can take 100000 200000 of that, or there's veterans benefits. There's different techniques and strategies we can use to take care of mom. And they might be into their 70s at that point, and we can still put up some plans or programs for mom and dad to help them to have care for the rest of you know their life, long-term care, assisted living, and home care. You guys always have some great stories. Tell me a great story uh, about somebody that you've helped, and it just kind of puts that smile on your face. I have a recent couple went to one of our workshops and they were like so many other people. They came in and had 10 different investments all over the place. It was totally scattered. They never felt comfortable with any single individual or firm that they work with. They had a couple accounts at some big houses. They had some leftover 401ks. They thanked us profusely at the end of our meeting. We met with them for three or four times, took our time with them, put together a specialized plan for them. They love the idea that all their money was in one place. They were working with one excellent firm, like our you know our firm. They liked the idea that we covered all areas. We covered their retirement planning, their income planning for down the road, looked at their budget to see what type of money we needed to give them guaranteed money for down the road, and we also covered the long-term care planning. So they are covered 100% across the board. The husband and wife both thanked us afterwards and and said how grateful they are that they came to our seminar and we were able to help them plan for the future and have, have them totally covered. They said they felt so scattered prior to coming into us. They didn't know where to turn. They didn't know, they, they didn't really, you know, they just felt like they were very disorganized. And they talk about it as that we are sort of what we would say would be quarterbacking their retirement planning, long-term care planning situation. Right. Yeah. That's, a, that's a good way of looking at it, quarterbacking it for them, you know, just helping helping them get through and get to the end zone, really. Right. Right. Right, right, and and not have to totally struggle struggle along the way because, because I would say 90% of the people that come to us for the first time, their investments are, and they have no strategy at all, and they still might be working with people, but they have no strategies. They definitely have no long-term care strategy. That's 99.9% of the time they have no long-term care strategy, very little retirement planning strategy, very little Social Security strategies, very little income 
planning strategies. They simply have investments all over the place and 60%, 40% blends in their stocks and bonds. We dig so much deeper into true retirement and long-term care planning to give them a sense of comfort and let them know that they are taken care of for the rest of their lives. Right. Peace of mind is king. Peace of mind is king. The things that, you know, don't keep you awake at night. Right. Really, it comes down to just start. Start some way, somehow, get it started. You know, that's that's the biggest thing is, you know, people him and haw about, you know, oh, well, I'll get it. I, I can start tomorrow. Just start. Right. Just start. And, and because you can change it and make adjustments as things go, um, you know, it's fine. But getting started is always the hardest part. That's correct. And that's why I'll, when a lot of people come to us, say, in the 55 to 70 age range, they have a tendency, and they, they admit it typically, they have a tendency, they just put it off. They put it off because it's the unknown. They're unfamiliar with it, and human nature is, I'm unfamiliar with it, I'm going to ignore it, put it off, and when the time comes, I'll figure it out. Well, that's not the way. Like I said earlier, you don't do that with your health care planning. You don't wait until you are sickly ill to go in and have a colonoscopy or go and have some of your exams. And we say the same thing with your financial planning, retirement planning, and long-term care planning. Let's do that in advance. So sometimes we do have to prod people along the way, get them going in it, because they are grateful once they get to the point of doing it. Now, one key area of our firm where we believe we are better than anybody else is educating people. My background is as an attorney. I use a consultative style. I don't use the word sales. Sales has nothing to do with what we do. I use a consultative approach. Uh, We educate people, and then we offer recommendations to put together plans for them. And we try to... I, we believe that the education and the comfort level is what makes people make that move and put the plan in place. And we think we are a step above pretty much any firms out there that the education approach, the a- answer, ask us any questions, let us know where you are, and we will put together a specialized plan for you. And you've got a, a best selling book. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, our book, Tax Free Money for Long Term Care, is a New York Times bestseller book. And the idea in there, it's filled with beneficial information and so much information beyond what the general public is aware. So we do uh, workshops with our Tax-Free Money Long-Term Care uh, book. We try to sit down with people and really educate them, and that's what the book does, opens up so many more avenues that are available to people for long-term care than the traditional financial advisor approach. Hey, let's buy you an expensive long-term care standalone policy. There's so much more out there that the general public is not aware of that other advisors are are aware of. And our book is filled with tons of information that will help people plan for long-term care. Awesome. And again, uh, the name of your company is A2 Investment Solutions, right? That's correct. A2 Investment Solutions. And you're in Ann Arbor, Michigan? Ann Arbor, Michigan. Nice. What makes uh, what makes it a little bit different in Ann Arbor? Because every market is different. Right. Every, every, every state has different rules and laws. Uh, is there something special about Michigan laws that, uh, that you can share with us? Well, one thing that we look at in Ann Arbor and Michigan laws, well, one thing about Ann Arbor, it's very educated, great community, great people, health-oriented people. So they're healthy when they come in to see us. So maybe sometimes they're less likely to see down the down the road. So it's important for us to educate them. When you when you drive down the street in Arbor, I've never seen so many people out jogging and running or walking their dogs, but inevitably people are going to have issues down the road. So it's important that we educate our Ann Arbor clientele, but we also love that they're very intelligent, educated people and they understand so we can have great communications with our clients when we sit down with them. It really allows, we love to educate. My background, I have an MBA, a law degree, an attorney. Now in Michigan for 26 years, we go hand in hand with our Ann Arbor and the Ann Arbor local communities and towns surrounding Ann Arbor that we can really teach our clients, educate them, and they love that education. And we think that puts us a step above every everyone else. Everybody's out jogging because Ann Arbor's a great food town, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. It really yes, is. Yes, yes, that's true. So they probably eat a lot that night, and the next morning they're out jogging right. 10 miles. you got to work off all those great burger yeah. joints and stuff. Right. I always say you could go to a new restaurant in Ann Arbor for a full year and enjoy the meal and never repeat yourself. 
well, we talked about a little bit earlier, my wife's family's from Michigan too. So I've been to Ann Arbor and it's like, uh, uh you, you can tell that I like my food. <laughs> <laughs> so Ann Arbor yeah. was a great visit for me too. Right, right. Exactly. Well, I appreciate the time here, Joe. It's been, it's been a lot of fun and uh, very informative. Um, and uh, I, I appreciate you joining us.